Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, okay, so um, as I said, uh, today's lecture is going to be just uh, uh, 30 minutes at most, uh, 25 minutes, I would say. Okay, so uh, let's see. What we did last time was, uh, uh, I, I believe uh, we did this uh, directional duality. and uh, uh, gradient. So these two concepts we can introduce uh, via two formulas. One was, or two notations I would say, uh, D, F, U, it's a directional derivative, that's one concept, and then uh, we prove that this is equal to uh, basically grad f dot u. Uh, so this is like gradient of f or grad f, whatever, dot u. Okay. So this uh, concept measured the rate of change of uh, uh, the function f on the unit direction u. So that's equal to rate of change of f in the direction u. This u, I remember, is always for us a unit vector because um, if you don't fix uh, the length of u to be one, we have to agree on some, some scale. If you don't fix it at one, then uh, if you take it bigger, you're gonna get a different rate of change and that's not desirable. We want to have rate of change just depend on the direction equal to a unit vector. Okay, so this is what we did uh, on Monday. Uh, I mean, everything was for functions of two variables, right? F of X and Y, functions of two variables. But everything we did, obviously, easily, we can extend to functions of three variables. There's nothing to stop us doing that, right? So uh, today, uh, we just take a function of three variables, F of X, Y, Z, Right. And um, for this function, uh, let me define the gradient. Okay, gradient of f, which is inverted uh, triangle or nabla of f. I'm not sure if I talked about this as nabla yet or not. This is also called nabla. Um, perhaps it's a Greek, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a Greek uh, alphabet, but maybe it's even a Greek word, I'm not sure. It's an abla. So this is an abla of f. This is equal to uh, this vector fx, fy, fz. So it's a vector uh, in three dimensional space because our function is uh, of three variables. Its components are fx, fy, and fz, like that. And this formula has a perfect analog here. Uh, similarly, we have dfu equal to uh, gradient of f dot u. Um, uh, this formula holds in 3D as well. This formula gives rate of change of this function uh, on the unit direction u in terms of gradient and u and inner product, right? So that's what uh, we know. Um, so now, uh, one of the applications of this uh, 
gradient is um, something we already kind of know, namely uh, the normal vector to a uh, level surface or tangent uh, plane to a level surface. So, node. So if we have a level surface, given f x y z, for example, equal to zero, a level surface. So we just think of this as some surface S, which is this one. And if you have a point on the surface, uh, you can be interested in two things, the normal line to the surface at that point and tangent plane to the surface at that point, right? So you, can, you might be interested in knowing what is this tangent plane here. And also you may not want to know the normal line equation. And remember this point is x0, y0, z0. x0, y0, z0. And this of course satisfies the equation f of x0, y0, z0 equal to zero. And what we are interested in is this uh, normal vector n. Uh, n need not be a unit vector, right? Uh, it's just a normal, uh, it's just a vector. It's normal to the surface at that point. Then n um, uh, so is equal to what well, we can say gradient of f is normal to surface. Of course, there are many other vectors that are normal to the surface. Or we can take any multiple of this vector and any multiple in that direction, right? But I'm claiming at least this one, this vector gradient is normal to, uh, to, to your uh, surface. So this is equal to, of course, uh, fx, fy, and fz. So as a result, then you can write the equation of uh, tangent plane like this, uh, fx times x minus x0 plus fy times y minus y0 plus fz, z minus z0 is equal to z. So we have, this is the equation of the tangent plane. Okay, so we can find equation of tangent plane, equation of uh, normal vector, because this, uh, I mean, the yeah, normal vector, and also equation of normal line, because we have this point, and we have this vector n, then you have everything, uh, basically. So any questions or? Everything is clear, right? So that's, uh, Okay, now let me give you an example so that uh, to put everything in some context for you. So here's an example. Uh, can you read this here? Maybe, yes, example. Find point or points. Uh, we don't know yet, there may be several points, uh, points on the ellipsoid. 2x2 plus 3y2 plus z2 equal to 1. This is an ellipsoid, right? And this ellipsoid uh, holds a tangent plane at which Tangent plane is parallel to the plane F. 
x plus y plus 2z equal to 1. Okay, so um, so okay, so that's the uh, that's the question. Uh, so uh, let me give you a kind of geometry of this problem. So the problem is like this. So uh, I mean, the scales doesn't matter here. So I just uh, give a rough sketch. So this is an ellipsoid. This is an ellipsoid, and here's a plane. Okay? This is ellipsoid, this is plane. Uh, don't mind, uh, don't worry that they may intersect or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. We just look at this. Plane. Now, we, are, we want to find points on this ellipsoid, perhaps here and there, such that if you draw a tangent plane to the ellipsoid, it's going to be parallel to this plane. Uh, you can see that, you can sense that um, there's going to be a two, two planes because if you move this plane parallel to itself, it's going to reach to a point where maybe here, where this is going to be tangent. But then as you move on, you're going to intersect. But then as you move out, then there's another point that's going to be tangent. So most probably you, you sense that there should be two points, not just one point that solves this problem. It's good, it's good to have this sort of geometric intuition into this problem before doing the calculations. Okay, so now the calculations, of course, um, this is a function f, you bring it to the left-hand side, for example, you get it, this is equal to zero. So um, f of x, y, z. is equal to 2x2 plus 3y2 plus z2 minus one. So we are putting this equal to zero, right? So let's compute gradient of this function, uh, which is fx, fy, fz. That's equal to, well, this is like 4x, right? 4x and 6y at 2z. Right? So we have that. So this is uh, equal to m, a normal vector. Uh, now uh, we want to uh, find uh, this point in such a way that. Uh, the normal vector should be along the normal vector for this uh, surface. But the surface is this, and what is the normal vector to the surface? Well, the normal vector to the surface is already given, one, two, two. So then we know that uh, n for uh, plane, normal to plane, is equal to one, uh, one, and two, right? So what you're saying is that this vector should be a multiple of that vector or vice versa. So in other words, we should have four X, six Y, two Z, should be equal to lambda times one, 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 two, sorry. Do you understand this point? This is crucial, right? Uh, we did some uh, choice here. We made some choice. We said that we are looking for point x, y, z, such that uh, this vector is a multiple of this vector. And that exactly means that the tangent plane to this guy here is parallel to this plane. Okay, so but what does this mean? This means that, well, I mean, just solve this equation. You get that 4x equal to lambda. So x equal to lambda over four, y is equal to lambda over six, and z is equal to uh, lambda, right? Because I just put these things equal to these things. 
Okay, so we have got this very valuable information, sorry. <clears throat> but this is not any other point. This is a point which is on the uh, ellipsoid, right? So uh, finally, we have to solve these values into the ellipsoid equation to find the value of lambda, possibly. Hopefully, I mean, not possibly. So, okay, so let's uh, put these values into, into that equation. The ellipsoid equation is this one. So we should have then um, uh, x is lambda over four. We have two x two. Two lambda over four squared plus three y two, three. Again, lambda over six squared plus Z is lambda, but then we have Z squared. So lambda squared minus uh, one is equal to zero is the whole thing should be equal to one. Okay. So if you solve this, you get lambda squared times two, this is one over 16 plus three, one over 36 plus one is equal to one. So you get lambda squared. So this is one over eight plus one over 12 plus one equal to one. So we've got lambda squared. Uh, this is eight times 12. So I, I take 24, three, two plus one equal to one. So this tells me that lambda squared is equal to 24 over uh, two times two plus three is five and six. Uh, so five, six, 24 divided by six. What is 24 divided by six? Is four, right? Is 24 divided by six equal to four? Yes, very good, thank you. Yes, it's uh, four. So lambda is equal to plus minus two. And this confirms our geometric intuition about moving this plane parallel to itself to come, become tangent to the surface and then move on. And then again, become tangent to the surface. So, the, so we got two answers indeed. So we got two answers. Okay. so. Uh, so then uh, finally the points uh, are obtained by substituting it. So required points are, well, uh, the first one you put lambda equal to two, I said. So this is equal to two over four, uh, two over six and two. And the other one is minus two, so it's minus two over four, negative two over six, and uh, negative two. Okay, so you can simply this. This is just minus uh, half, one third, and two, and then, um, no, this is not minus, sorry. And then this is minus, negative half, negative third, negative two. And notice, uh, what is the relation between these two points? The, this is exactly the negative of this one. So it just means that as you move, you reach the kind of diametrically opposite point on this uh, surface, and uh, you have reached uh, to your second point. So everything uh, just uh, fits very well with our intuition. Oh, there are some chats. Uh, what this chat means? Uh, no, sorry, 24, 21, what is this chat? Agree, I think so. Okay, so you're talking to each other, good, okay. Yeah, like it should be lambda square 24 or 26. I thought it was lambda. Well, uh, it doesn't matter, I mean, um, This is the answer. 
It's not 24 over 29, sorry. Sir, can you explain why 4x, uh, 6y, and 2z has to be like a scalar multiple of 1, 1, 2? Oh, this one? Yeah. Well, I mean, what is this uh, quantity, 4x, 6y, 2z? That is the normal to this surface, right, at some point. This is gradient of f, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that? Yeah. Okay, so that's gradient of it. So that's the, that's the normal to this, uh, normal vector to the surface at this point. Uh, but we are looking at point where the normal is actually equal to normal to this plane that's given separately. X plus Y plus 2Z equal to Y. Okay, yeah. So what is normal to this plane? One, one, two. Is one one two exactly? So what we are uh, looking for is a point x y z such that this vector is a multiple of the other vector. Yeah. Okay. I see it now. Okay. Very good. Very good. That was Thank a good you. question. Thanks for asking. Excellent. So we are just saying that yeah, this vector should be a multiple of that, and then okay. So that gives me an equation now for lambda to solve, and the equation is quadratic. So. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So, um, yeah, so this is kind of an interesting question that can arise in this context. I mean, uh, you have to, you know, argue a little bit, and, but put together different concepts from different parts of the book and this course, and then you get that. Um, so this is the equation of tangent plane and uh, normal line. Um, yeah. So uh, next topic is really, uh, we have to go to section 4.6, which is about um, maximum and minimum. Um, so I don't think, as I said, I'm gonna finish soon. So I don't think I, it's not a good idea to stop. Well, maybe we can just have discussion. I uh, start the discussion and then we continue. So this is 4.7, which is maximum and minimum. So kind of the core concept, the core concept, the basic concept in this section is the concept of critical point, okay? So this is a very important central concept, critical point. So you have to have a very good grasp of the idea of critical point. Uh, what does it mean? How to calculate a critical point? And what is the bearing of this idea of critical point to this problem of maximum and minimum? So what is critical point? Uh, critical point uh, is, first of all, there is a context that this is uh, discussed. So you have a function of two variables. This function uh, is defined uh, in some open subset uh, that contains the point x0, y0. It's defined. and an open set U inside R2 containing X0, Y0 belonging to U. So let, let me explain first of all what this uh, concept means. So it means that uh, we have some set U but your function is defined here, like f is defined. So this is like in R2. And you have this function going into R, right? So we have this function. The only thing that uh, when you uh, see this definition I'm going to give is the idea of what is an open set. 
Open set means the following thing. I mean, I don't expect you to know, uh, the, uh, recall exact definition, but you, you must have a good idea of what it means intuitively. Open set means that any point in this uh, set U, there exists a disk around it that's completely inside U. So every point you take, there's a disk that's completely inside. Uh, so boundary points of this U, for example, are not inside U as, as a result of that, because uh, if you have a boundary point, at this point, if any, any small disk you choose is going to be points outside and inside. Okay, so uh, e.g. Uh, the set of all xy such that norm of xy is less than one, this is an open disk. Open disk is in fact an open set. But uh, you can have things that are not open. For example, you can have, um, um, for example, uh, I mean, uh, you can have some closed disk, for example, containing the boundary of it also, but these boundary points, uh, these are bad points because if you have a point here, in any small neighborhood of this point, there's going to be point outside you and inside you. So this is you. So this is not closed, uh, not open, sorry. So I, I recommend you uh, look at the definition of open set and closed set. Uh, so I have a question. You didn't find your topology in R2. How could you get your open set on R? Well, I don't need to know topology. I, I know a lot about topology, but I don't need to give you the definition of topology. I'm just telling you what is an open set. Don't worry about that. Just open your book open your book and study open sets, then you're okay. You don't need to talk about topology. If you, know, if you want to know about topology, come to me later on, but we don't need topology for this, sorry. Okay, so, um, uh, so this is just uh, not open, this is open. You have to have a good intuitive uh, notion of open set. That's all we need, right, okay? So uh, once you know the idea of open set, then I can define critical points. So, for well, this, uh, we have to wait for next uh, lecture on Friday. So I have to leave now because there is an important meeting I have to attend. It was just not uh, planned before. So I will see you on Friday. And if you have questions, just send me your questions. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. Thank you.